In this video, we will explain Compton scattering and show you how to derive the Compton wavelength. This scattering process goes like this. A photon meets a particle at rest and they scatter off at a certain angle phi and theta. If you now compare the wavelength of the incoming photons and the outgoing photons, experiments show that the wavelength is different. But why is that? In 1923, US physicist Arthur Compton published a paper where he explained this behavior by treating the photon like a particle with a certain momentum. Later on, this earned him one half of the 1927 Nobel Prize in Physics. Let us now do some calculations to see why the wavelength of the incoming and outgoing photons must change. First off, we label the initial photon's momentum with Pi and the outgoing photon's final momentum with Pf. We can write down a photon's momentum in many different ways, but since we want to investigate wavelength, h over lambda is the most useful one. As for the particle, initially it has zero momentum, since it is at rest, and after the collision it has momentum p. Let us now use the equations of momentum conservation. This enables us to write the square of the particle's momentum using just quantities that we know. For instance, initial and final wavelength and scattering angle. Now, since we are dealing with elastic scattering here, we can also rely on energy conservation. So let's take a look at what the initial and final energies are. For the photon, we get the energy simply by multiplying the absolute value of the momentum by the speed of light. For the particle, we use its relativistic energy-momentum relations to get the initial energy as its rest mass energy and the final energy as the square root of m squared plus p squared. It's useful to write conservation of energy such that the square root is isolated on one side, so that when we square this equation, we can get rid of the square root. We can now subtract this term on both sides and also divide by c squared to make things easier to read. Note that the only term that remains on the right hand side is the squared momentum of the particle. This means we can set this p squared equal, one time coming from momentum conservation and once from energy conservation. We can subtract pi squared and pf squared from both sides and after a bit of rearranging terms, we get the result that the difference between the final wavelength and the initial wavelength is given by a constant h over mc times 1 minus the cosine of theta. This constant in the front is called the Compton wavelength, and it's a different value for each particle. For example, the Compton wavelength of an electron is around 2.4 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. Finally, since a cosine can only take on values between minus 1 and plus 1, the quantity in brackets can only lie between 0 and 2. Therefore, the final wavelength of the photon can change up to two times the Compton wavelength, depending on the scattering angle. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.